Hi, this is Bruce McConnell with Locomotive Systems Trainings. Welcome back. Uh, we had to extend out our uh, our times that we're producing these videos because I've been doing a lot of traveling. Uh, so, uh, but just hang in there. You'll still get all the information. All right. So anyway, <clears throat> we're still in air brake circuits, and today we're going to talk about equalizing reservoir and brake pipe systems. And this is LSTV dash. 040. So uh, before we go any further, I do want to mention, I'm going to go back a little bit, kind of a quick review. If you remember from the last video, or one of the last videos, the air for the entire air brake system comes from main reservoir. Main reservoir is the air that all air on that entire locomotive originates from. Without main reservoir air, we do not have an air brake system. Okay. Now there's always, because of the way the system is designed, there's always a lot of confusion of is it main reservoir, is it equalizing reservoir, is it brake pipe, is it quick action there, what is it? <clears throat> well, essentially, in theory, it's all main reservoir, but we, we take the air and we categorize it so we know the function of that air in that system. So you're going to hear us talking about different uh, types of air, air pipes, and so on and so forth as we do this, this video. All right, so let's go up, and what I do is when I teach this class, one thing I always start out with, who are the players in the game? Well, for that, we need a road map, and I just happen to have one here, and let's take a look at this. This here, and allow me to get in the picture for a second, this dashed line that goes all the way up to here and all the way down here is actually one valve. In fact, it says right here, all components in the dash box are located inside the 26C automatic brake valve. So all we have one, two, three, four, five different components. All those components are in one valve, the 26C automatic brake valve. All right, so we have a P2A brake application valve, and then we also have a 220 cubic inch volume reservoir, and we also have an equalizing reservoir gauge. So let's really break it down to the simple core components that make this thing work. We always have a total of four automatic 26C automatic brake valve, P2A brake application valve, a 220 cubic, cubic inch volume reservoir, and an equalizing reservoir gauge. And that's it. That makes up the entire equalizing reservoir circuit. This circuit <clears throat> is approximately 26 feet in length and it does a very important job in controlling the brakes on that train which we'll get to in a little bit. All right, so what we have, we are in the equalizing reservoir circuit. We're in the charge lap position. Now, depending on where you go and what, uh, what uh, source you go from, a lot of people will say, well, this is what they call the release position. And they're absolutely right, release position. But what I do when I teach this is to try and really get it into your head is I add one element to it, and I call that release and recharge position because <clears throat> in release, is the only position, the only handle position of the automatic brake valve where you're actually recharging the air brake system. Okay? No other position on, the, on that quadrant will recharge your brake system except one, and that's in release. And I added release and recharge just to get you in your mind that the only place I'm going to recharge my brakes is in release position. So you hear me refer to it as release and recharge for that reason. All right, now. <clears throat> Getting back to the players, we're going to modify that a little bit. Uh, remember, this is a basic class, and I keep everything very, very simple, very, very basic. Just a moment ago, I mentioned there were four components. The 26C automatic brake valve, the P2A brake application valve, a 220 cubic inch volume reservoir, and an equalizing reservoir gauge. Now, there's one component in there that I'm going to actually discount or not include because, number one, there's no moving parts, and in my almost 40 years of railroading, I've never seen one go bad. Now, in going around the country, I've heard that once in a while this component can go bad, So, but that's pretty much the exception, not the rule, so I'm still going to discount it. And that's going to be this 220 cubic inch volume reservoir. It's there, it's part of the circuit, but that's not a movable thing and that's something we don't change out in the normal course of, of working on the railroad. Now, again, it's still a very important part of the circuit, but we're going to rule that out. So now, we're going to go back and talk about replaceable components in the equalizing reservoir circuit would now only be three. That'd be the 26C automatic brake valve, the P2A brake application valve, or a gauge. We're down to three. Now, <clears throat> there's approximately 30, depending on the type of locomotive, depending on the type of system, 
somewhere between 30 and 40 components that locomotive may be equipped with. And they'll vary from, from builder to builder and also railroad to railroad. But approximately 30 core uh, components what we talk about when we do training. So what I try and teach everybody is look at this not only as a diagrammatic of how this system works, but also use it as a basic inventory sheet when you go out and work on this locomotive. Now, <clears throat> so we have our three players, 26C automatic brake valve, P2A brake application valve, and the equalizer reservoir gauge. Now, there are two pipes that are associated with this circuit, and let's take a look at what they are. Over here is called pipe 15, equalizing reservoir charging pipe. It starts through the regulating valve. On the automatic brake valve, there's kind of a, uh, it's not a knurled handle, but it's kind of a, well, it's a round handle with notches in it. I can call it a notched handle, and you just turn that up and down to set equalizing reservoir. On a freight locomotive, we will set that at 90 PSI, <clears throat> okay? So equalizing reservoir is created in the regulating valve. You'll notice over here that I have a red line here and a red line here, both with T's on the end. Let me explain that. The locomotive, the 26C automatic brake valve, actually has two inlets of main reservoir up inside that valve. One is at the regulating valve, the other is in the relay valve. Again, both components are located inside the 26C automatic brake valve. The reason there's a T there is because right now the air is flowing. We're assuming that everything in here is fully charged up to 90 pounds. So let's take a look. Now, this is the charge pipe or supply pipe. This guy's job is to fill this great big massive circuit. I'm being kind of funny here. But really, all it is is a U-shaped circuit. Real simple. Okay, we start out with 90 pounds. We draw a main reservoir in to the regulating valve. That creates our green air. When I get 90 pounds of air in the system, that go from an arrow, which means flow, and that'll go back to this. But again, we're not even there yet. So we have a T here and a T here. All the air has already flowed. We are in what's known as a lap position. Okay, and then let me clarify that. A lap, the term lapping, L-A-P-P-I-N-G, means air is flowing. It hasn't stopped flowing yet. When we get to the term lapped, that means all the air is done flowing, all the pressures are now set at whatever designed to set at, and the air is no longer moving. That's called lapped. Okay? All right. So with the, with the system fully charged, and speaking of charge, I'm going to step in the picture for just a second. Valve lap takes approximately five minutes for initial charge. And depending on the railroad and the company that you're working for, uh, some say five minutes, some say ten minutes. It just depends on uh, the condition of the locomotive and what your railroad operating rules are. All right, <clears throat> so let's say we had a 10 minute charge time. Automatic brake valve panels in release and recharge. May reservoir would have flown into here and this valve, this regulating valve be set up to 90. So we, air would, from main reservoir would flow in and we go from red, which is a color code for main reservoir, to dark green, which is a color code for equalizing reservoir. Red turns into green, Green goes down through the equalizing reservoir cutoff valve and exits the automatic brake valve right here. It goes into the P2A brake application valve, <coughs> excuse me, as pipe 15. It's really important that you understand that. It goes in as 15, it makes it a little bit of a curl here, and it comes out as pipe 5. Remember, pipe 15 is an equalizing reservoir charging pipe, pipe 5 is an equalizing reservoir control pipe. Same air, same pressure different function. This is a charging pipe or supply pipe. This is the control pipe. And that's what we're going to talk about next. Goes in the P2A is 15, comes out as 5, goes up, and will charge this 220 cubic inch volume reservoir, or what we call the equalizing reservoir tank, up to 90 pounds, as we're showing on the gauge here. It says ERPSI 90. That's what the system fully charged on a freight locomotive. And we come up here, we're in pipe 5, ER control pipe goes up, and that air, that dark green air, will end right here inside the relay valve. That is the entire equalizing reservoir circuit on a modern freight locomotive equipped with 26L equipment. Not too tough. All right, now, <clears throat> so the most components we have to deal with in its simplest form are three. And again, they bear repeating for troubleshooting purposes. 26C automatic brake valve, P2A brake application valve, and a gauge. So you can leave 27 of those parts in the store department. Okay? Then you take them out. 
All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to venture from this diagram, see if we have a little better understanding, I'm going to actually show you the components that are involved in the circuit. So here we go. Let's take a look at them. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a 26C automatic brake valve. Uh, it mounts in the, in the uh, control stand right there when you're sitting in the seat right there at uh, arm length. And it has a handle. And by the way, and I've said this before and I'm going to say it again, you never use the color of the handle to determine what valve that is. Never, never, never. I've seen these black and I've also seen these handles red. So you never use the color of the handle to determine the type of brake valve this is. You always go to the brake valve itself. This is the 26C automatic brake valve. Okay? Down below it, you can, you can see some of it, but not all of it, is the SA26 independent brake valve. Two different valves doing two different things. We're focused on this component right here. Okay, let's go to the next one. All right. <clears throat> if you remember from the diagrammatic, we had the P2A uh, penalty two applications, uh, brake application valve. This guy is used in the penalty circuit. Now, there's two sides to a penalty circuit. One side is for safety, the other side is for vigilance. And what I mean by that, let's say that uh, you're driving that freight train and all of a sudden you keel over with a massive heart attack and you can no longer, you lost the ability to control that train. Well, what will happen is, <clears throat> based on crew alerter, uh, action or dead man pedal or whatever that locomotive is equipped with safety device wise will initiate a penalty brake application beyond the engineer's control and literally bring that train to a full and complete stop with a penalty brake application. Okay? On the vigilance side, uh, what that means is the P2A is now watching the engineer and making sure he doesn't overspeed the train, uh, doesn't, uh, uh, that does respond indeed to the cruller, you know, to mash that yellow button to make sure that the, the locomotive knows that the engineer is alive and well. Uh, it could also be a dead man pedal, which would be the you know, same as vigilance. But there's also on the penalty side, you also have, uh, uh, you also have uh, uh, again, the overspeed if the engineer goes too fast. Uh, some locomotives or some railroads operate in what they call coded cab signal territory. Uh, some operate in ATC, automatic train control. And of course, the latest and greatest one that's coming out all over the, all over the country, and that is positive train control, or what we call PTC. <clears throat> all of these are designed to give a penalty brake application, slow down and stop the train, come to a full and complete stop. Okay? P2A. Let's go to the next one. Okay, gauges. This here, again, we're just going to show you this right now because I'm going to show you another one in a second. This here is the main reservoir. It's what they call a duplex gauge. That's two needles in one gauge. I don't know if you can barely see it, but there's a little red needle buried behind the white one here. The red one will be main reservoir which normally operates at 130 cut in to 140 cut out. We want to keep that as main reservoir tanks full of air at all times so we get the, the, the proper volume and pressure of air to the air brakes so we get the air brakes to operate properly. The white needle on the left is equalizing reservoir. That's the circuit we just talked about. On a freight locomotive with the automatic brake valve handle and release and recharge, that gauge would read 90 pounds, 90 PSI. Okay, let's go to the next one. All right, and here is a little snapshot of both gauges. There's actually three here. We'll talk about that in a minute. The gauge on the right here deals with uh, <clears throat> brake pipe. The white needle is brake pipe, and the red needle is brake cylinder. And again, it's a duplex gauge. Uh, they will actually operate independent of one, one another. Uh, when brake pipe goes up, brake cylinder goes down. When brake pipe goes down, brake cylinder comes up. Just, I always tell everybody about the teeter-totter effect, okay? So the engineer is looking literally at all these gauges here to make sure the brakes are working as intended. And this gauge here on the right is what they call, now not, and not all locomotives are equipped with them, this is what they call an airflow meter indicator. They use an airflow method to test uh, the amount of flow going from that lead locomotive down through the train to make sure it's, it's, the train is properly charged and doesn't go drop below it to a dangerous level. So that's what they call an airflow indicator. Okay, but the gauges we're going to concentrate on today is going to be this one and this one. Okay, all right, let's go to the next one. Oh, I guess that's it. So some cool things to learn. Remember, main reservoir creates all equalizing reservoir and the equalizer. Well, the first air in the main or the equalizer reservoir circuit is main reservoir. The second air created, the second air in the equalizer reservoir circuit is equalizing reservoir, and in the next one we're going to talk about who's next created in the next circuit. And again, thank you for watching our videos. Hope you get a lot of good information out of it. Please contact us at your convenience and we can be located at 
www.lst-ca.com. And by the way, that's not a number one, that's lowercase l. Once again, www.lst-ca.com. Thank you and have a safe day. We'll see you next time.